The high school boys basketball season tipped off tonight with a full slate of games, including the defending 4A state champions opening up at home. The Rigby Trojans hosted Hillcrest as a pair, part of East Idaho game night on IdahoSports.com. First game for Hillcrest under new coach Dave Austin. Starting the third quarter, nice passing from the Knights. Austin finds McKay Carlson under the basket for two points. Knights up by three. Trojans answer Ben Fulmer, the six foot sophomore, spots up from downtown. Trojans take a five point advantage, 36 31. More from Rigby, the passing. Connor Shippen to Nate France. The assist counts just as much as the bucket. Rigby holding a five point lead. But check out McKay Mangera spots up for three just before the third quarter buzzer. Hillcrest goes into Rigby. They pick up a 56 52 road victory to open up the season. Tonight on Sportsline, we dive headfirst into the boys' high school basketball season. Could Bonneville or Rigby come out on top tonight in Jefferson County? And now, Sportsline with Jeff Landers. Welcome into another Friday night edition of Sportsline. I'm Jeff Landers. Julia Cox will join us in just a few moments with some high school basketball out of the Gate City. And later in the show, we'll have our top plays of the week. But first, we begin in Rigby. The Trojans hosting Bonneville tonight. Both teams looking for win at number one after dropping their openers on Wednesday. First quarter tight ball game. Bees play a little give and go to Coleman Clayton. He connects on the three ball. Bonneville up by two early on. Then on the inbounds play, Jaden Howell feeds Trevor McDonald for the easy bucket. Bees go up one with a minute to play in the first. Rigby would respond though. Ty Cottle pushing it ahead for Ben Fulmer in transition. He uses the glass. Trojans go up by six after a 7-0 run. Then Rigby getting some defense. Braden Boyce taking a charge. We always got out of sprints at my high school for taking charges. I hope he doesn't have to run this week. Trojans took a 13-point lead in the fourth quarter. They hang on to win it by one, 60-59, as they nearly let the Bees rally for the victory. Over to high school basketball now. Rigby on the road taking on Bonneville in the hive. The first quarter game's tied at two, and Ty Cottle hits the tray ball, making it five to two. Rigby. Moving forward, the game is tied at five, and Dylan Sorensen goes to the baseline with it, and he lays it in. Still in the first, bees are up ten to five. Tate Furness can't get a shot to fall, but his buddy. Braden Boyce is right there to tip it in for two. Less than a minute to go in the first. Tyler Scoresby hits nothing but net on the three. It's 16 to 7 B's. In the second quarter, it's 20 to 9 B's now. And Ben Fulmer hits the three, pulling his team to within eight. Later, Britton Cunningham gets the ball, drives through traffic, and is able to get the two points. And later on, it's Cunningham again hitting the baseline three. He had a team high 16 points. The B's led. 34 to 23 at the half and would go on to win the game 55 to 45. Century High School, the Diamondbacks hosting Rigby tonight. This is the conference opener for both teams. Third quarter, Rigby leads 27 to 20, and the Trojans find Braden Boyce down low for two points, extending their lead to nine. Later in the third, they get it to Boyce down low again. He misses it on the first try, but second time's a charm, and Rigby leads 31 to 20. Still in the third, there's a loose ball. Century comes up with it. They give the quick pass off to Tucker Hugh, who puts it in, making it 22 to 31. And later on in the quarter, Rigby moving the ball around well. They get it to Ty Cottle, and he's looking suave hitting the three. And check it out. He throws out a piece of trash on the court while he's at it. It's 36 to 22 Rigby. About a minute to go in the third. It's Zach Hearn with the dribble drive through traffic to the hoop, and Rigby would go on to win this. This one 59 to 42 and how about snake open up the champagne pop it's my house come on turn it up uh. hear a knock on the door and the night begins cause we've done this before so you come on Rigby on the road 
taking on the Pocatello Indians. First quarter, Trojans are up by two, and Jacob Madsen banks it off the board for two, and later on, it's Ben Fulmer with the no-look pass to Braden Boyce, and he puts it in for two. The Indians would start to get things going, though. The game's tied at six, and Jaden Brown misses the first chance, but second time's a charm. It's eight to six, Pokey, and then moving to the second quarter, it's tied at 12. Parker Nielsen gets the lucky bounce pass off of Zach Jensen's shoe, and he's able to lay it in. And then later, it's Kobe. Kobe Gardia hits the tray ball, and the Indians would go on to win this one 59 to 40 and remain undefeated in district play. Over to some. Now let's head over to the pit where Pocatello was hosting conference a rival Rigby in a much in a bigger blowout game. Zach Jensen with the drive and he finds Parker Nielsen for the easy lay in Pocatello on the board down four to two Indians will take their first lead of the night with three minutes left in the first Jaden Brown misses the layup but he cleans it up with his own rebound pokey up eight to six. This game was tied at 12 to start the second quarter Rigby will retake the lead when Tate Furness connects from downtown at Trojans up 15 to 14. It would be a close first half as Pocatello took a four point lead into the break, but the Indians came alive in the second half as they win 59 to 40 to remain undefeated in a conference play. Tonight on Sportsline, we've got a pair of rivalry games, including Madison and Rigby in Jefferson County. Could the Trojans hold off the invading Cats? And now, Sportsline with Jeff Landers. Hello and welcome into Sportsline on this mid-January night. I'm Jeff Landers. Julia Cox will join us in a few minutes with a rivalry game out of Pocatello. Hannah Miller is with us as well. And don't forget, we'll have the top plays of the week coming up later in the show. But tonight, we start in Jefferson County. Madison visited Rigby. The Cats dominated this rivalry game earlier this season. But Madison coming off their first loss in 10 games. Could uh, Rigby take advantage? Start in the first. Josh Crane slipping through the defense. Gets the runner to go. Madison up by five late in the first. Rigby kept pace. It's Tate Furness driving the lane. Uses the glass for two. Rigby trailed by six at the end of the first quarter. Now in the second, Trojans are going to cut that to four. Connor Geisler, the six foot three senior, goes to the left hand. Trojans down 15-11. Madison with answer going outside. Jackson Edelmeyer finds Nathan Webb on the wing for three. Madison goes up by seven. Then it's Edelmeyer working down low. The turnaround jumper in traffic. Madison wins it 69-39. Cats sweep the season series. Make yourself up a home. Tell me where you been. Pour yourself something cold, baby. Cheers to this. Sometimes you gotta stay in. And you know where I live. Yeah, you know what we is. Sometimes you gotta stay in. At the 4A level, the Pocatello Indians lost out on the second seed and a first round bye. The Rigby Trojans got that bye instead. Rigby hosted Pocatello tonight. Winner goes on to the 4A championship to face Preston. First quarter, Trojans are going to work the ball around. Jordan Hope steps in with the catch and shoot from 15 feet. That goes Rigby leading by three. Pocatello is going to answer. Kicking it out to Jaden Brown in the corner. Spots up for three. Splash down. Pocatello pulls within one after the bucket. And it's going to be pokey in the end. Kobe Gardea threads the needle on the beautiful pass. Indians win at 51-44. Pocatello goes to Preston next week for the 4A district title. The defending 4A state champion Rigby Trojans played an elimination game tonight against Pocatello on the road. Starting the third quarter, Rigby leads by 10. But Pokey's Kobe Gardea pulls the Indians within eight. Rigby answers. Ty Cottle knocks down a three-pointer. It's 34-27 Trojans. Cottle had 22 on the night. Then Jaden Brown, he's going to spot up and sink a three. Pokey cutting into the deficit. And then Bryant Kimbrough will tie the game at 40, but it's not enough. Rigby wins it 59-52. Trojans are going back to state where they'll try for their second straight state title. 
Now, it's been a minute since the Pocatello boys basketball team qualified for the state tournament. The last time the Indians were in that tournament was back in 2009, and since then they haven't really been close to clinching a state spot, but that could all change tonight. Pocatello is hosting Rigby with the winner booking a ticket to state, and for the loser, well, their season is over. Third quarter, Rigby in possession, but not for long. Kobe Gardea with the steal, and he's sprinting to the other end. He misses the layup, but Jaden Brown, he's going to clean it up, plus the foul Trojans their 10-point lead has been cut to just five and the Indians now they'll get within two Gardea he'll get the friendly roll Pocatello down 36 34 with 325 to go in the third Ty Cotlet with uh, the pull up and he gets the tough shot to fall Rigby they're gonna take a two-point lead into the fourth quarter and Pocatello they're gonna tie it up with under four minutes to play Parker Nielsen he takes it all the way inside it's 44 all could Pocatello pull it off but the answer is no. Rigby, they pull away and hit their free throws down the stretch. Trojans win 59-52. Pokey sta State drought continues. It was the same scenario between Highland and Hillcrest. We're going to get there in just a couple seconds. We're going to show some more celebration. Um, there's some black now. It was dark there, but I'm sure the lights come on. There we are. From last year, Rigby taking on Bishop Kelly. The Trojans took home the glory last year, third quarter. Rigby trailing, but it's Cole Baker for the night spinning in the lane for two. That cuts the deficit to just one. And Rigby answers the pass, gets deflected, but the Trojans find Connor Gleaser in the corner for three. Trojans up by four. And more from Rigby as Geyser, sorry about that, turns, tries to share the ball, finds Braden Boyce underneath for two more Trojans lead 31-26 in the third, but it's the Knights with the revenge on the Trojans as Dan Sabala to Max Rice for the bucket and the foul. BK goes on to win it 52-50. to Day two of the state boys basketball tournament tipped off across Boise today with teams trying to book their tickets to the state championship final. 
and others playing for their tournament lives in elimination games. KPVI sports reporter Jason Borba followed the action all day long, and he anchors our coverage from the state tournament in Boise. 14 Eastern Idaho teams came into the state tournament with championship aspirations, but after the first round, only eight of them were still in state title contention, and the other half were playing for the consolation. In 4A, the Trojans won't defend their state title as they fell in the first round, so they took on Caldwell in the consolation bracket. Caldwell got off to a hot start, going up 7-2. Forrest Smith with the air ball, but he gets bailed out by Braden Swanson, who cleans it up. Rigby's Ty Cottle with the steal, and you think he has the easy layup, but no, he misses. No worries, though. Tate Furness has his back. Rigby down by one. And now with just over three minutes to go in the second quarter, Rigby will take their first lead of the game. Ben Fulmer with a gorgeous dime to Jacob Mattson for the lay-in. Trojans up 16-15. to It would continue to be a back-and-forth ball game, but Rigby survives 45-43. They will play in the consolation final.